Well, I want to welcome everyone this evening to our fireside chat. This is our very, very first fireside chat. And the whole intention is really to help our business partners, our guests to have a better understanding from a perspective from healthcare professionals about CBD and the whole cannabis plant, right? And so we're hoping that once a month when we have these fireside chats that you actually invite your healthcare professional. You know, you invite your physician or your nurse practitioner or your chiropractor or your dentist or your esthetician, you know, whoever is in the health and wellness field, along with your guests who are lay uh, folks, we want you to invite them to this fireside chat so you can really engage with the healthcare professionals here at Wakana about this amazing plant. So I'm going to get started. We're going to talk about uh, the Wakana movement, a little about our story, our co-founders, what makes us unique in the marketplace. But first, I want to start with just introducing who I am. So I'm Dr. Rita McGuire. I'm the chief medical officer here at Wakana. I'm one of the co-founders, and I represent the pillar of health. So it's my job to really empower uh, all of the knowledge about this amazing plant to our customers and to our business partners as well. So today is a somber day for me. You know, a year ago, I lost my nephew. My nephew is on the far left. Uh, my nephew was in his last year of dental school. Uh, he was 28 years old. He had a really bad sickle cell crisis. He coded and he passed away a year ago today. So truly I am dedicating this webinar to my nephew, Ricky C. Um, today I celebrated him by going to get my teeth clean. You know, he would have been cleaning my teeth today, but uh, he's pictured here with my three children, my adult children, Jacob, who's 29, Joshua, who's 24, and the baby girl, who's 22. So today, yes, bittersweet, but we truly, truly love and will always remember Ricky C. So I'm an obstetrician gynecologist. I've been practicing for over 30 years now, still doing hysterectomy, C-sections. In fact, I'm on call right now. I'm in the physician's lounge. We have three people in labor. So I'm glad I have my colleagues here in the event I get called away. They absolutely can take care of you. Uh, I've transitioned my gynae practice into cosmetic surgery. So I do liposuctions and tummy tucks. So I used to be that physician that, you know, would frequently read our ob um uh, publications and journals, but now I am mainstreaming it with cannabis. Yes, never ever in my wildest dreams that I think that I would be in the cannabis industry. But I am because three years ago, I was introduced to CBD. See, I didn't know anything about CBD. The only thing I knew about cannabis as a physician were, you know, my patients coming in labor with positive urine drug screens for THC or maybe the occasional smell of cannabis on my children. Uh, but outside of that, they don't teach us anything in med medical school about cannabis, let alone herbal or plant-based medicine. So cannabis is mainstream. Uh, in fact, I was asked to testify in front of the Judiciary Committee for the legalization and taxation of the recreational use law here in Illinois. So Illinois was the 11th state to pass the recreational use of cannabis. And you may say, why in the world as a physician, would you be an advocate for cannabis? Well, let me tell you why. Because 99.9% .9 of my patients are positive for THC. And I would prefer that my patients, instead of getting cannabis from the black market, which is lysed and, and, and tainted with rat poison and fentanyl and a lot of harmful chemicals, I would much rather allow my patients to medicate with products that are tested. So that's why I'm an advocate 
for the cannabis plant. In addition to, I've been working with CBD in my practice for the last three years. And I've seen patients who want a holistic, organic, natural way of addressing their health, improve their health. And so that's why we're gonna talk tonight with other healthcare professionals, how they're using it in their practice and what their experience has been. So a little bit about our company. Our company is Wakana. We launched a year ago, April 20th of 2019. And Wakana was brought into existence through the synergistic efforts and foundation of four African-American women. In fact, we are the only minority female-owned CBD company that we know of in Illinois, maybe in the entire United States. But we're much more than a CBD company, right? We're a movement. And we feel that this movement is so important because it's our communities that have been hit hard on the drugs. It's our communities where folks, our family members may still have records from even low possession of this cannabis plant. So our whole vision is to end the negative stigma. And that's what we're gonna to do tonight. If you've come on this webinar and the only thing you know about cannabis is getting high or reefa or dope or whatever word that you use as a negative stigma, we're gonna end that tonight. We also have a mission because you may be on the line and you may be wondering, well, how do I even get into the cannabis industry? I know it costs millions of dollars. So we're a catalyst to help you find your niche. You may be a physician, you may be a dentist, you may be uh, an entrepreneur already, you may be a chef, you may be a, a hairstylist, whatever it is, you can wrap our product and our opportunity around what you're doing to really take back your health, wealth, legacy, and freedom. So we know that this cannabis industry is the next wealth creating industry that we're ever gonna see in our lifetime. So I want you to meet the four co-founders. Our CEO is Melissa Boston. She brings to us over 29 years of direct sales. She also has uh, 16 years in corporate America. In fact, this woman at the age of 33 fired her boss. She was in corporate America and fired her boss to do direct sales and network marketing. She's trained over 50,000 distributors in over 40 countries. She's an author. She is a social media strategist, but more importantly, she is the vision behind Wakana. Our president, Dr. Patricia Van Pelt, is a state senator serving her third term here in Illinois. She's also a businesswoman. And then our senior VP of sales, who was just promoted to chief sales officer, Phyllis Nash, brings to us over 30 years in the restaurant industry, in real estate industry, as well as the liquor industry. And we call her our midwife. She births all of the sales possibilities within us out. See, I'm the doctor that delivers the baby, but Phyllis is that midwife that stays with you, not on the entire nine months, but the entire time of labor, right? I'm right there catching the baby, baby's out and I'm gone, but Phyllis is right there with all of us. And then myself, I'm the chief medical officer. I bring to you over 30 years of uh, experience as an obstetrician gynecologist. But what's really important that you should know is all four of us have been in the cannabis space for the last three years. See, we're experts and pioneers in this space and we are excited to lead Wakana. A little bit about our growth. Since we launched Wakana, our revenues have grown 162%. We are now doing consistently about a quarter of a million dollars every month. Despite the pandemic, we are in a freaking global pandemic. But our sales continue to go up. Why? Because people are looking for a holistic, natural, organic or alternative to their health. Quite honestly, patients are sick of the side effects that medications are giving them. I was trained at Wayne State School of Medicine. I did my residency at Cook County. Absolutely, I understand there is a place for traditional pharmaceutical medications, but there's also a place for plant-based medicine. 
So it was really our colleague here, Dr. Sanjay Gupta in 2013, who made a public apology. You know what he said? He said, we were systematically misled about this plant. He said, I didn't dig deep enough. As a physician, I didn't do my due diligence about this plant. I just believed the negative stigma. But he said, when I did my, my, my research and my due diligence and looked at thousands of people that have recovered, that have improved from cannabis, he said, I no longer say that this is a bad plant. So it was really Dr. Sanjay Gupta in 2013 that really has really helped cannabis to be more acceptable medicinally and to be less of a negative side effect. So let's look at cannabis. When you look at the plant, the family, cannabis contains over a hundred plus what we call cannabinoids or, or compounds that it produces. But the two most common ones that you should know about is THC, which is the part of the plant that gives you the high. It's the psychoactive part. It's the part that gives you that paranoia if you smoke too much, right? You start seeing deer and other things in your garage. But then there's CBD or cannabidiol. It's the non-psychoactive part. Act, act, it's the non-psychoactive part of the plant that gives you the health benefits without the high. So within the family, there's two species. One species is marijuana. We've all heard of marijuana. That's the species that gives you the high. It has high levels of THC and trace amounts of CBD. And then there's hemp, which I knew very little about. I was like, what's hemp? But hemp is a part of the plant that has very trace amounts of THC, in fact, 0.3% or less, and high amounts of CBD. So it's the hemp species that gives you the health without the high. It's the hemp species that we're gonna talk about tonight. And it's the hemp species that many of you probably never ever knew that the cannabis plant had a part that didn't get you high, right? Many of us just know that cannabis must get you high, but hemp does not get you high. Health without the high. In fact, despite cannabis being illegal, being a schedule one drug, in 2003, the U.S. government has a patent on CBD that shows, you see it here, U.S. patent 6630507, I don't have my glasses on, 51, and this patent shows that CBD not only is a powerful antioxidant, but it's a neuroprotective. That CBD can address free radicals that tear our body down. That CBD is a neuroprotectant that helps those who have had strokes, those who have Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, those who have uh, dementia to improve those damaged nerves. CBD, there is a patent. Many of you may not know that. So in 2018, fast forward from that patent, but in 2018, the Farm Bill was passed by President Trump. And this is really an Agriculture Improvement Act, but it removed hemp from being a controlled substance. See, hemp was bundled with marijuana. And for 80 years, since prohibition, hemp has been deemed a Schedule I drug, which is a drug that has a very high potential for addiction. It has a very severe safety profile. And guess what? It has no medicinal benefits. That's where hemp was for over 80 years. So the 2018 Farm Bill legalizes CBD that comes from hemp. So guess what? This is a legal product that can be consumed, that can be sold, that can be imported and grown in all 50 states. Now there's a little disclaimer about all 50 states. There are some governors in some of these states that didn't read the memo. This is a federal law. They didn't read the memo. So there's some states now like Louisiana and Texas and Indiana that are now saying that smokable hemp is illegal. So there are some gray areas when it comes to smokable hemp. But as far as the CBD tinctures and the gummies, 
and our topicals in all 50 states, CBD is legal. So what has happened since 2018? If you're a physician on the line, I know we have physicians on the line and healthcare professionals on the line that want to see the science. Well, there's over 20,000 peer review articles about CBD, about cannabis. You can use your favorite search engine and whatever you want to know, it's there. But now there's more studies since the 2018 Farm Bill was passed on humans as it relates to CBD. And these studies are now underway at UC San Diego. They're looking at CBD and early treatment of psychosis. They're looking at the therapeutic responses of CBD and rheumatoid arthritis. They're looking at the management of insomnia uh, in adults with CBD. They're looking at CBD as a strategy to treat alcohol dependency. They're looking at CBD and its role in regulating anxiety and eating disorders like anorexia nervosa. They're looking at CBD with autistic children and ADHD. They're looking at CBD and its function in those who have multiple sclerosis. The list goes on and on and on. And if you want to see studies in humans from years back, those studies come out of Israel. See, in Israel, cannabis has always been a legal substance, so they've always been able to do research as it relates to humans. So the studies are there. So what is CBD? CBD stands for cannabidiol. It's the second most common cannabinoid found in the cannabis plant, but it's the most common found in the hemp plant. So yes, CBD can come from marijuana or CBD can come from hemp. Again, tonight, we're talking about CBD that comes from hemp. It gives you the health without the high. So unlike THC, CBD will not get you high. I've used CBD in my practice for the last three years in conjunction with pharmaceutical medications for those patients who really want to come or to decrease the amount of pharmaceutical medications they're on. And I've been very successful. So what are some of the medicinal benefits of CBD? Again, there's 20,000 peer review articles that you can find about the medicinal properties of CBD. PubMed has lots and lots of research and our healthcare professionals will be sharing some of that research with you tonight. So CBD relieves pain, it relieves anxiety, it reduces inflammation. It relieves psychosis, it stimulates the appetite, it reduces nausea, reduces seizures and convulsions. It prevents nervous system degeneration. It suppresses muscle spasms. It manages blood sugar, it treats psoriasis and eczema and acne. It inhibits cancer cell growth, it reduces the risk of arterial blockage. It increases bone growth and it kills or slows bacterial growth. Now, if you're like me, three years ago, I was like, listen, sounds like a snake oil. Absolutely nothing can do all of that. But there's science behind how cannabis works in our body. And the science is through the endocannabinoid system. See, this system was discovered in the early 1990s. I'm dating myself. When I was at Wayne State School of Medicine as a medical student, never missed a day of medical school, somehow they didn't teach us this. In fact, less than 5% of medical schools are teaching this. So the endocannabinoid system is deemed the most vital regulatory system in our body. It regulates our mood, our blood pressure, our pulse rate. It regulates how we feel, how we react. And how does it do that? It has receptors all over our body. Throughout our entire body, there are receptors in organs and glands that are looking for cannabis. Can you believe that? That are looking for cannabis to put our body back in balance. See these receptors in CB1 in our brain and our central nervous system, when they see CBD and they bind, they help us with anxiety. They help us with our mood. You know, I needed that today, the anniversary of my nephew. I was sad, I was depressed, but I was able to use my CBD and feel better and not be so down and out. There are receptors in our periphery and in our immune system those receptors are really important because they modulate and regulate pain. They help with the immune system in autoimmune disorders. There's receptors in the eyes, the lung, the liver, the kidney, the bowel, the skin, the heart, the teeth. I went to the dentist today. My teeth aren't sensitive, but I needed my CBD just to 
reduce the fear and anxiety? How many people hate going to the dentist? So these receptors in the teeth are helping to improve periodontal disease. There are studies that show that CBD can address the inflammation and bacterial infection, even in those who have periodontal disease. So our product line, we contain a power or a full spectrum product line. Those are products that contain the legal limit of THC, which is 0.3% or less. And then we have a line for those who have random drug screens. That's our pure line. That contains less than 0.0% of THC. Neither product will get you high. I cannot stress that enough. Our CBD is extracted from hemp, which contains the legal limit of THC and CBD as well. Our products, again, we can't make claims. The FDA has not regulated this industry, so we can't make claims. We can't say the CBD, tr CBD treats, mitigates, cures any disease. But what we can say is we can, we can lead you toward the science. The science tells it all. We can say that CBD helps to relieve symptoms that are due to arthritis or symptoms that are due to lupus but we can't say that CBD cures any disease. So in 2018, when the 2018 Farm Bill was passed, you saw CBD products everywhere, CBD companies everywhere. There was CBD being made in garages and basements. There was CBD at gas stations, as you can find it. There's CBD at video stores. Like who would buy CBD at a video store? Why? Because you want to ensure that the product that you're taking is tested. None of those products are tested. Here at Wakana, we provide some of the most rich medicinal hemp that's compliant with the State Department of Agriculture regulations. That means our hemp is grown organically. Our products are industrial hemp registered and our products are farm bill compliant, meaning they don't, they contain the legal limit of THC which is 0.3% or less, and our CBD is sourced from hemp. We also provide certificates of analysis on all of our products. Certificates of analysis are third-party validation that allows our consumers to see the potency, to see that our products are free from mold, mildew, heavy metals, and pesticides. See, hemp is a bioaccumulator. So when you plant hemp, if the soil is not organic, it's going to absorb heavy metals, pesticides, things that can harm immunocompromised patients or family members, patients who may have cancer, patients who may be HIV positive. So you want to ensure that your product not only is potent, but the product is safe and effective. So we have certificates of analysis on every single one of our products. So that's just an overview. I'm going to bring up our very first panelist, I'm going to bring up Dr. Erica Montgomery. Dr. Erica Montgomery is a clinical psychologist, and she is going to uh, share some really important information about some of our products, as all of our panelists are going to do, and how they incorporate it in their practice or with their family and their friends. Dr. Erica Montgomery, are you out there? Yes, I am. Thank you so very much for having me, Dr. Rita. I love CBD and I like talking about CBD. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share some of the um, uh, slides that I have um, just um, to kind of give you a little taste of what um, I personally use and then what I um, um, offer to my patients. So I'm going to uh, let's see, share my screen with you. Let's see. And so like Dr. Rita said, I'm a clinical psychologist and I have been practicing for about 23 years um, in um, outpatient um, practice. And to be honest with you, for a long time, I have been looking for a alternative. Because I'm a psychologist, I do therapy and um, and if someone wants medication as a form of their treatment, then I would have to refer them to a psychiatrist. And one of the um, the, the problems that I have been running into in, in my career is that many people don't want to take prescription medicine, um, either because of the side effects 
or um, they just don't want to take something that is synthetic. Um, they want more natural alternatives. And so when um, I learned about the option of CBD, um, I was really thrilled because, um, like I said, many of my patients wanted some relief. And so what I often say um, in my field of mental health, I always tell people mental health is really human health. And we all, especially during this uh, pandemic and quarantine and just the change of our lifestyles and our routines, we're all experiencing stress. We're all experiencing anxiety. And uh, many of us are going through deep depressions because again, we're at a place that we've never been before. And so I always, you know, start off by educating my patients on a natural alternative to prescription medicine. And CBD, of course, is um, new to many people. So I often spend time educating my patients on the difference between CBD and, um, and medical marijuana. And so, um, again, if any of my patients are suffering from anxiety, depression, insomnia, stress, um, I am oftentimes recommending that they give CBD um, a try before they, um, before they, you know, I refer them or they, you know, are wanting to try a um, prescription, prescription medicine. And so the three, uh, often products that I recommend, I use these products myself, are the pure products. And the reason why I like the pure products is because um, many of my patients have to take random drug, drug tests. And so their first concern is number one, can they you know, pass a random drug test. And so the pure line, we have the tinctures, the gummies. Um, and what I tell them is that, you know, it is going to provide relief, you know, of those anxiety, insomnia, uh, depression, focus, stress, chronic pain, it will relieve it. They don't have to worry about side effects. Um, they don't have to worry about random drug tests and you know we oftentimes have the conversation about plants over pills because like you said dr rita oftentimes they're like well what's the research you know they want to know that there's you know evidence research of the benefits of cbd and you know it surprises me that they will take prescription medicine that have all of these side effects and you know have you know, history of, of even killing, um, especially those on the opioid meds, um, killing some of their patients, and but yet they ask about the research and they really want to know the validity of the CBD. And so I oftentimes have to start with education. But what I tell them is that if you want a holistic, organic, pure product, CBD is what you want to try. It's full spectrum. It's not psychoactive you don't get high, it's legal in all 50 states, safe for random drug screens, you don't need a prescription, which is a big one. Um, there's no documented deaths, it provides assistance with anxiety, depression, insomnia, stress, focus, chronic pain, and just many others. I have children also in my practice that I um, will recommend the pure gummies um, for to help with focus in attention, um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder um, and with also PTSD and trauma. And so pretty much that is my go-to um, for, for my patients who are interested in trying something that um, besides therapy will help them relieve those symptoms um, and they don't have to do the prescription medicine. So. That's my take, and and these are my products. <laughs> I do my t I do the pure too. I take my three drops uh, under the tongue in the morning, and then I do my gummy at night. So, I I I think it's a a game changer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Montgomery. Thank you so much. We're gonna take questions at the end. So if you've got questions, you can put them in the chat box. 
now we will address each and every question. I'm going to bring up now Michelle Agnew, uh, who is uh, one of my dear and dear, dear labor and delivery nurses. We've worked many, many years together. I'm so excited that she has opened again to holistic and natural options. And Michelle, you can now share your screen. Okay, can you see my screen? I can see your screen. All right. Okay, I am Michelle Agnew. I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for over 30 years now. Don't seem that long, but it's been 30 years, Dr. Rita. Uh, I'm a nurse in the OB. Uh, I'm a labor and delivery nurse. Uh, it's been my passion. It's what I actually went to nursing school for is to deliver babies. And uh, how many people get to do their dream job? And that's what mine has been. Uh, last year, I um, had the privilege of uh, Dr. Rita introducing uh, CBD to me uh, through Wakana. Um, she invited me to a conference. She had invited me before. Uh, I looked at the invitation, and then I said, mm, I don't know, and then I decided to go. That changed my life that day, because I understood some of the answers uh, to the questions that I had been asking about, uh, is there something better for our patients uh, who come in and they have high blood pressure, they have diabetes, they're suffering from preeclampsia, and so is there something other than these medications that could help with their um, issues? Uh, research studies show that CBD helps to manage pain. Uh, the uh, compounds found in CBD reduces pain and inflammation. It relieves some stress and anxiety. And we know as we're going through this COVID, you'll hear us say this over and over again, because this is something that we have never, ever had to deal with and we're all in this same boat together i don't care what nationality you are i don't care what religion you come from we are all in this same boat together uh, how to survive during this time of COVID. these are the three uh products that i normally use uh the relief uh, is a product that i started out with i had uh sciatica around February of last year, before I had come to know about CBD, my husband literally had to carry me into the chiropractor. Uh, once I got on board with CBD, I was still doing my um, going to the chiropractor, but guess what he said to me? I recovered much faster than I would have normally done without the CBD. So I still use my CBD for my lower back pain. Uh, and it comes from sitting, it comes from uh, us standing, it comes from us not properly uh, picking up objects or pulling or pushing objects from us. The immune tea, I would talk about that, that helps to keep our immune system uh, strong, you know. Uh, the Amoeba Sisters has this thing on YouTube and it talks about, it shows you an animation about the immune system and, and go check it out one time. It's really, really interesting. And then the other product that I use is uh, our CBD lube. I am 60 years old. I will be 61 this year. Uh, I am uh, not only postmenopausal, but uh, hysterectomy. So my hormones in uh, areas that we as women that are older, um, there's some dryness. And so I use the CBD lube. Now, we talk about CBD and back pain, uh, CBD and pain, and this is one of the leading causes of disability in, uh, worldwide, is our lower back. And it's often the reason why people are off work. It is estimated that 80% of our, uh, our population is going to suffer with some kind of back pain. And so there was a study that was done uh, for a transdermal cream. That's this cream, the Relief Topical CBD, cream is 200 milligrams that I use. And in that, uh, in that uh, 
study, they talked about the relief of the symptoms in, from a lumbar compression fra fracture. And so I put up the, the research there if you want to take a screenshot of it so that you could go look. But it talks about treatment of acute and chronic back pain. Um, it, there's some pains uh, that we would encounter as we get older, conditions such as arthritis, infection, and injuries. Uh, arthritis pain, there's two types. Uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, it is our autoimmune, it is an autoimmune disease where the immune system begins to assault our joints. Uh, most often it affects our hands, our feet with inflammation and it causes us some pain, some swelling and stiffness in the joints. Osteoarthritis is degenerative and this affects our joint cartilage in our bones and it causes stiffness in our hips, in our knees, and in our thumbs at times. So our, our power extreme relief, 200 milligrams, you take a small amount on your pinky uh, finger and you put it in the area of the uh, pain. Uh, the ingredients that we have in there, shea butter, this organic coconut oil, which is uh, our oil that we use, uh, and it's peppermint, cinnamon, uh, spearmint, black seed, eucalyptus, sweet basil, turmeric, and uh, arnica cloves. So you see that we have we have uh, products in there that are all natural. Our defense tea is a defense uh, detox tea, and it's a program that we use to focus on restoring our health. Uh, during this time of the COVID, it's cr it's crucial. It is really critical for us to strengthen our body through healthy eating, uh, immune defense supplements, and proper hand washing and wearing a mask. And all of this will reduce transmission of uh, infectious diseases. And the re research should suggest that the main task of our body's immune system is to fight bacteria, the viruses, parasites, and fungi, and remove it from our bodies. So this demands that we have a strong immune system. It recognizes and it counteracts any harmful things, even from our environment. Um, and it will fight it off uh, in our bodies. And it even, even uh, cancer-like cells. It tries to attack it and fight it off. So with our defense tea, uh, you boil it. Uh, in 32 ounces of purified water. You place the bag in there, you let it cool before you refrigerate it and you just drink some. And you see the ingredients that we have also are all uh, natural. Echinacea, you know, years ago is a big trend. Everybody wanted to use and, and uh, uh, do echinacea. So we do have that within our product. Lastly and leastly, the third product that I use is the Cherry Bliss CBD Lube. Um, the research suggests that CBD products um, may improve your libido by reducing anxiety because some people actually have anxiety about sexual performance. Some men do. It's not just women. And this could decrease their libido. But they're saying that CBD, the research says, it relieves that anxiety and the desire for sex may go up and increase. Now, there's a couple of things that we look at that will also um, affect our libido, erectile dysfunction. Some research states that uh, CBD may assist in actually relaxing the blood vessels to the penis so that, so that the increase in the blood flow uh, can cause the erection and possibly a longer lasting sexual experience. There's also poor lubrication. As I said, women who suffer with dryness and pain um, after sex or after they've been in menopause, the use of lubricant can enrich their sexual performance and reduce pain. And the third uh, one we're to talk about is low sex drive. Some people do. They have a very low sex drive. Uh, scientists suggest that uh, cannabinoids activates the brain receptors to release that sense of arousal 
and sexual desire. And in, in it, concluding that cannabinoids aid to increase low sex drive. So our Cherry Bliss CBD lube is 400 milligrams. Uh, it comes in this beautiful, beautiful bo uh, bottle here. Uh, and the directions are, it's personal. It's a personal lubricant. Uh, you use how much you need uh, for uh, the penis and, uh, and the vagina application. It's intended to moisturize and lubricate. It's uh, compatible with most of your uh, rubbers and I, I just put one based on space on here but it's compatible with natural uh, rubber latex it is not a spermicide and is not for contraceptives and so as we look at our products here uh, just think about cbd helps to relieve pain it helps to build your immune system and it helps to enhance your sexual uh, experience Dr. Rita, I'll give it back to you. Wow, looks like I'll be delivering more babies uh, nine months with that CBD lube, but thank you so much for that information. So, so important to understand that, you know, those receptors that are found in all parts of our body, every organ and gland, even our reproductive area can help to enhance sexual performance as well. So thank you, nurse. Michelle Agnew. I'm going to move on to Dr. Caius Crawford. Dr. Crawford is, uh, again, another buddy of mine who I met five years ago. We were in a bikini challenge where we were in a weight loss challenge. She is a marathon runner. She is all about fitness. She's a family practitioner. And Dr. Crawford, can you share your slides? Uh, once again, um, thank you, Dr. Rita, for having me in this fabulous uh, panel of health care providers. And I'm excited to um, talk about a few of my favorite products. And one of the products um, that I wanted to show is the Power Mango Body Cream. The Power uh, Body Cream, my husband uses it uh, for his eczema. And it has relieved his um, irritation and, of course, pain and itching. And reason being, research shows that the CBD uh, interacts with the cannabidiol receptors in the skin, and that helps makes a balance um, between the inflammation in the skin. And also, it has been found that sometimes um, eczema is considered genetic, but it also is aggravated by the environment. And so sometimes their surface um, antibody, um, surface infection. And so the CBD also helps with antimicrobial, anti-itching properties. And also um, with the immunity on the surface cells, they're called the Langerhead cells. Those, the CBD helps um, maintain the immunity in the cells. And in our, in the cream, we have the uh, cannabis sativa, but we also have about five essential uh, um, oils that help with the entourage effect to help the, and to boost the uh, canna cannabis and uh, all the other, the witch hazel. So this is the product that my husband loves and he steals it from me. So I always have to buy an, an extra um, bottle. And as I said, uh, Research shows let me click this, um, <clears throat> that the uh, this is a a retro study a retro uh, perspective study of twenty patients. Uh, five of them had what we call ectopic dermatitis, which is eczema, and five had uh, psoriasis, and ten had just scarring. And with the application of a CBD ointment twice a day for three months there was a significant um, improvement, was statistically significant with the p-value um, for the people who understand the research uh, part of that was less than um, 0 0.05, which is uh, excellent. And if anybody wants to get these um, articles, uh, I can send that to you if you, uh, you know, submit your email. But research shows that, um, um, that there's uh, improvement with the ointment, mainly because of the anti-inflammatory properties. 
And then secondly, <clears throat> I like to introduce the uh, power tincture. It's a preparatory um, uh, tincture and it has the black seed oil and um, turmeric, the coconut oil and the hemp seed oil. And what's so great about this, it can be, it's been shown to help out with um, the discomfort and pain and sleep. But for me, I personally have used it because um, as Dr. Rita said, we met in the gym and I actually lost about 30 pounds and started eating right to improve my own um, hypertension that I had. So even though I'm a doctor and we were trained on a lot of the, the traditional treatments, I also wanted to find an alternative uh, way to improve my blood pressure. So in addition to exercise and eating better, um, in addition with my blood pressure medicine, I've also maintained a decrease in blood pressure because the CBD has uh, helped with uh, decreasing the inflammation that are in our blood vessels. So, um, with the uh, power tincture, just want to remember if you have any random drug screens, you want to kind of avoid that. But um, otherwise, it's an excellent um, way to improve your um, sleep and improve your pain. And like I said, for me, it also uh, improved my, my blood pressure as well. And um, earlier we mentioned the the pure um, gummies, but we also have the um, power gummies and they're 25 milligrams per uh, gummy. And you wanna, like you said, start slow. So uh, it's the funny story I have that I tell people how um, getting up early and exercising on Saturdays and going running, trying to get that recommended seven to eight hours of sleep, seven to nine hours of sleep. So um, I used the gummies and the first time I used it, I woke up and you all had that, that sleep where you woke up and you kind of wiped all that uh, extra <laughs> slob from your mouth because you just had that, the best sleep that you had. And the receptors bind to um, CBD, I mean the CBD receptors and the CBD bind together and it's been shown to um, help with the, our sleep patterns. And um, it's just a great thing to use in addition to the tincture and the um, gummies, those are helped out. And there's um, several studies, and this is an actual larger study um, from Medline that shows that CBD, cannabidiol and anxiety and sleep um, were improved. And it was a study um, at about 103 patients that were at a psychiatric clinic and um, they were given between 25 milligrams a day to one patient received 175 milligrams because they had um, trauma in their um, history. And after the first month, there was a significant improvement by, um, by uh, conducting questionnaires so it was improving in their anxiety and it maintained throughout the, the study. There's also was improvement in um, sleep and for the first month. Now with the sleep, it only showed um, some fluctuation over the time in sleep or overall um, the CBD uh, helped with the sleep and the anxiety that was mentioned before. And uh, yes, and that is all. Hopefully you all um, can use the products. And I'm so excited, like I said, about the benefits that it had for me and my family and also alternative ways, especially for um, the pain and the sleep and um, my blood pressure. Thank you so much, Dr. Crawford. Thank you so much. If you could stop sharing your screen, then I can bring up our next presenter. Um, thank you so much, which is... Uh, I'm sorry, I still can't hear you, but... <laughs> uh, Shannon King is going to be up next. She is our uh, extraordinary uh, chef nurse. Uh, she is the reason why our spices and our whole culinary line here at Wakana 
is such a great tool to use uh, in your kitchen. Shannon King, are you there? Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Shannon King, as Dr. Men as Dr. Rita mentioned. I am the Vice President of Business Development at Wakana. I am also a registered nurse, a cannabis nurse, and I am the owner of a company that I have started um, after I joined Wakana, which is called Canna Entice, where we do CBD dining experiences. And um, that whole industry has just really been lucrative um, because everybody likes edibles. Everyone wants to infuse their foods and just have fun with it. So I have the pleasure of talking about the really fun aspect of um, CBD. We know that, um, as everyone on this panel has mentioned, all of the medicinal properties of CBD and um, the different ways that you can use it, whether it's topically or through a tincture. But what I'm going to concentrate on is the um, culinary aspect of it. We have three um, spices that we have here at Wakana. There is a garlic fire, there is a flavor king, and there's a chili lime. Now all of those are, um, are infused with 200 milligrams of CBD, which is, is really wonderful. Um, at the end of the day, the, the biggest thing to remember is that um, you need to get your CBD, you need to get that supplement into your body. So whatever your regimen is, whether it's taking three drops in the morning and three drops at night or taking a gummy and, and taking a tincture or using the topical. Um, remember, we have receptors as they've um, already spoken about. We have receptors in our body that is looking for CBD. So this is just merely another way of getting CBD into your body. You can't have too much and it can only make you healthy the more that you um, in, have in your body. So what I like to do and what I infuse 90% of my culinary um, events with is either the culinary, the water soluble, which I'll talk about that in a moment, either the water soluble or the culinary, which is the same as the hempranium, which Dr. Ta um, Taez spoke about. The only difference is it doesn't have the black seed, the peppermint and the turmeric in it. So it doesn't have a taste that would change your food. And then the spices. So the garlic fire, garlic fire is, is my all time favorite. That one is really good on um, when you're baking on the grill and you're just trying to infuse um, some of your day to day, day to day foods. The, the flavor king, really good on meats and steaks. Again, the garlic fire is good on, on fish and on salads. Um, and then the chili lime, that's really excellent on seafood. Um, and you could just have fun with it. The, the key to all of this is getting your, your daily dose of um, CBD into your body. So just have fun with it and play around with it because we know that getting CBD into our body helps us get balanced. Um, so now let me concentrate on the culinary. That's the bottle is 500 milligrams of CBD in the bottle. Each drop is 1.6 seven milligrams. Um, I'd like to tell people that when you infuse each dish, um, I like, or each serving, I like to have a nice round number of five milligrams, but you can absolutely do whatever you want. You can put 25 milligrams in it. Remember that you're going to lose some with, um, through digestion. Um, that's why the higher milligrams, like if you're taking um, higher milligrams of it, it's fine because you're going to lose some of it with digestion. But remember, what your body um, needs, it will take in, and then all the excess, it will um, excrete out. So um, again, the, the culinary, the black sea, I'm sorry, the culin we have a large bottle of um, Wakana culinary oil. It is 1,500 milligrams. I think we're currently out of that. But hopefully, you know, due to the large demand, we will be getting that back. Um, but that's really good that it has grapeseed oil in it and it has 1500 milligrams of CBD oil. We often um, add that to salads. And again, you can just kind of do whatever you want. 
the water soluble is also 500 milligrams of CBD in a 15 ml bottle, just like the culinary. And so each drop is going to be 1.67 milligrams. Um, and remember, all of these options are just ways of getting CBD into your body, whether it's infusing your kombucha, infusing your water, infusing your um, cocktails. That's a huge market right now to, re to infuse your cocktails. But it's also a great way for you to get your dose of CBD in for, for each day. So I hope that that has helped you out some. Um, in fact, I'm getting ready to eat dinner at this late hour now, and I'm infusing my food with it, so. All right, back to you, Dr. Rita. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. What a great, great panel. Um, right now, we're gonna take questions. We do wanna acknowledge our Farm D, who I see on the panel. Hi, Dr. Joy Smith. So we're going to take some questions because I know that the hour is nine. So let's take some questions. You can just chime right on in there um, with your answers from the panel. Whoa, this chat is going crazy. I can't even read all the questions. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Dr. Reed, I will just chime in for a second while okay. you're looking sure. Questions. I'm in the midst of bedtime, so I don't have my video on. I apologize, everyone. But um, I wanted to just comment on the drug interactions because I know a lot of people have questions about drug interactions with regard to uh, CBD products. Yes. And it's true that a lot of our drugs that we take do travel down the same pathways that CBD travels down in order to um, be broken down in the body. But the major concern is that say you're not able to get into your doctor just yet or able to have a conversation with your doctor about which medications interact, which medications you need, may need to increase or decrease. You wanna make sure that you space out your medications about two hours from the CBD product. So um, maybe if you're taking your blood pressure medications at 9 a.m. and you're not sure if that medication interacts with your CBD, just wait until 11 a.m. or after to take that CBD product because we want you to be able to experience the benefits of CBD and not be scared of that with your medications. There's a way to do everything without having your medications fighting with one another inside. So just wanted to give that little nugget before I put the little girl down. And this is an amazing panel. You ladies are great, great, great. I always learn something when I'm listening to all of you. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Joy Smith. Thank you so much. And tell my little patient, Ayana, I said hello. I uh, question from the audience is about ingrown hair. Would the Power Mango Body Cream help with that? That's one question. Dr. Crawford, you want to attack that one? Hello. Uh, hope you can hear Um, what is the recommended CBD dosage for anxiety, specifically in dental anxiety? Oh, I can answer that. Um, I had dental anxiety today. I took six drops um, an hour before my dental appointment. I took six drops of the Hempranium 500 milligrams. Um, and then I took a gummy, a power gummy, one power gummy when I got to the dentist. What did that do? Well, the tincture was able to work during my appointment. And then the power gummy kicked in about 60 minutes later. So it helped to relieve not only my anxiety, but I had absolutely no pain, didn't have to take Motrin or Aleve or Tylenol after my dental appointment. So um, that is the dosage I used. Um, I always recommend you start low and slow. You don't need a lot of CBD, but absolutely the tincture takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So taking those three drops or so, um, at least 30, 40 minutes before your dental appointment is thumbs up for me.
So when you're cooking with CBD, you want to talk about the temperature, Shannon, uh, that you want to cook with that CBD, what temperature, what heat? Hi. You definitely want to not cook um, any of your foods with the CBD in it over 350 degrees. So never, um, you know, never use it if you're frying or something like that. Um, what I like to do is add the CBD afterwards. Also, that's a good way to make sure that you're getting all of the dosage that you're looking for. Because sometimes if we add it to something, it could be, you know, a residual amount, especially the oil could be left on the plate. I mean, on the, um, like the bowl, if you're mixing a salad on a bowl and then transferring it to a plate. So if you're really looking for how many milligrams you're going to get and not wanting to waste any, which, you know, that's my biggest thing. I never want to waste any. Um, I'll infuse my plate after I've already set it. Now, there's some things that you can do ahead of time, um, especially if the temperature doesn't r reach over um, 350, because it, it may cause a bitter taste. It may tarnish the CBD oil and um, things like that. So we wanna make sure that we're getting the right dose. We'll make sure that we're getting all of it because our body really needs it, so. Fantastic, thank you, Shannon. Does the THC assist with the bioavailability of the CBD? Does anyone on the panel understand that question? Or what they're trying to ask? Maybe you can rephrase that question. Is that an anthracophic question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That it's a what? An like entourage, kind of like it strengthens it. Does the THC strengthen the power of the CBD when it's kind of like that synergistic effect? Is that, is that what you're asking? If that's what you're asking, please put in the chat because I want to make sure we adequately answer. Yes, that's it. That's what she's asking. I mean, I, I definitely think the power um, with, with the 0.3% THC is stronger than the pure. So CBD actually has a negative effect on THC. So that's why many people who overindulge in recreational THC, they will bring their high down with CBD. So it has a negative effect on the THC. With our full spectrum product though, the synergy or the entourage effect, that synergy is needed in so many different disorders. When you, when you do the research on disorders like seizures, uh, when you do research on disorders like multiple sclerosis and a lot of the autoimmune diseases, you need that THC to give that enhancement of the anti-inflammatory, uh, the lowering of the seizure threshold. So if you don't have random drug screens and you can use power, there are specific disorders that are found in the literature that do better with full spectrum products. If you have random drug screens, you just have random drug screens. You can't really get around that. You have to use our peer products. But what our peer products do have is the enhancement of nanotechnology, which is a delivery system that increases its bioavailability. So that does help the peer products to be just as effective as the power products. Great question. Dr. Rita, one of the one of the panelists, um, one of the um, attendees had asked, "What if you're getting the um, like fatigue or the tiredness when you increase your dose? What would you suggest right. with so that?" So one of the side effects of CBD, if you're getting too much, is fatigue, is tiredness. So you have to find that sweet spot. There's a couple of ways you can find your sweet spot. You can do something called microdosing. And what microdosing means is that every hour you take one drop of CBD, right? So microdosing takes a long time to find the sweet spot. Just imagine being at home and every hour you're using one drop until you find that dosage that's right for you. Another way 
is to dose via your weight, your body weight and the severity of your condition. And we can absolutely share that chart with you. Whoever invited you on the call can share that dosing chart with you. Um, that's another way. And then the third way is to kind of dose by our recommendation. We recommend that a good starting dose is three drops twice a day. If after four or five days, you don't see resolution that you want to see. And, and that's where it becomes interesting because we are a microwave um, society, right? We want to take this CBD. We want it to work now. Like this should work now. But I've had arthritis for 20 years. It's not going to work that fast in most people. You've got to be patient. You've got to change your diet. You've got to start working out. You've got to start doing all those things so the CBD can work, right? So the right now people, we want you to really understand that CBD works differently because CBD is metabolized differently depending on your weight, depending on your diet, depending on, on your, your body chemistry, depending on the severity. So start low and slow and be patient making sure that if you have a long-term condition, that it probably is gonna take a moment for the CBD to work, okay? So be, be diligent in finding that sweet spot, either through microdosing or your weight or the recommended dosing that we have on the bottle. But we absolutely are here to work with you. Question, Dr. Rita, if a person is experiencing that fatigue or tightness, should they reduce then the drops? They should reduce yeah. the drops, right. Yeah. Okay. Because that's why they're feeling that tiredness. And then okay. I always recommend combining our products so mm -hmm. that if you're reducing the drops, then you can, for instance, use the topicals for that breakthrough pain. If you're having additional acute pain, adding our cartridges or our pre-rolls, we absolutely are here to work with you to find that sweet spot. And in some people, it takes a month. In some people, it'll take 48 hours. In some people, it may take three months. In some people, it may take a week. But just know that in order for CBD to really, on a cellular level, to work, there needs to be what we call good protoplasm to work with. You know, I always can tell which patients eat healthy. The ones that eat healthy during childbirth, they don't rip. They don't lacerate their vaginal area. The ones that are not healthy eaters, they tear, they rip, you know. so make sure that your host is healthy so that the CBD can work a lot better in your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to mention if you have panic attacks, most of my patients with panic attacks like the vape because it's immediate delivery. They don't have to go through a full bone panic attack. It'll just catch it right before it starts to peak. I don't know if that's helpful, but very helpful. You mentioned the vapes. About that. You know, we talk about our vape cartridges and our pre-roll are really mm -hmm. good for acute onset of conditions like panic, anxiety, um, insomnia, um, gout attacks, anything, migraine attacks, anything that occurs acutely can even be addressed by pre-roll, our CBD pre-roll and our CBD cartridge. So you know, whoever invited you on the call, we want you to get back with them. We also want to, you know, let you know that we have a Facebook page. We have calls every night. We have so much information because remember, that's our vision and our mission here at Wakana to really empower you to get past the negative stigma, to get the information that can improve your health and your wealth as well. Dr. Rita, let me just inject uh, one thing as far as uh, children are concerned. Uh, my grandson is uh, diagnosed with ADHD, 
we put him on a little regimen of the pure um, water soluble one drop. We actually started out with the three drops. Uh, in the morning, but he began to get uh, just just a little sleepy. He wasn't really his uh, active self, so we took it down to one drop uh, in the morning uh, in uh, juice or something, and it helps to stabilize him. It helps him to calm down, but not just go all the way down. It helps him to have a regular activity level. So I just wanted to put that out there that also um, children uh, can take the CBD. Right. So we're currently out of our pure water soluble, but as soon as we get that back, that product is really good uh, for those who really can't hold an oil underneath their tongue for a minute before they swallow. How old is that child? My grandson is six. Okay. So our grandson is six. Um, it is to the discretion of a parent or a grandchild to start their, their child on our products. We cannot formally endorse our products to any children, but it is to the discretion of the parent, of the grandparent, of the guardian to start their child on these products. I've seen many children take our peer products and improve with conditions and symptoms due to ADHD and autism and depression. But again, we cannot formally, in our disclaimer, um, offer these products to children, but it's to the discretion of the parent or guardian or grandparent. As with OB patients, if you are pregnant, if you're nursing, it's to the discretion of your physician to recommend during pregnancy CBD. None of you on this line are my patients, right? If you were my patient, you would hear my discretion for my patients. Please speak to your physician before starting CBD. We want your physician to be engaged with your healthcare. We want every physician to understand that this science, the endocannabinoid system, is science that shows us how CBD works and cannabis works in our body. And we want every physician, every healthcare provider, every nurse, every chiropractor, every nurse practitioner to understand this science. So invite them on the call next Wednesday. So I think that's it. You guys were amazing. Oh my goodness. I got to go up here and deliver three babies now, but you guys were amazing. Whoever invited you on the call, please contact them so you can get your, your products ordered, so you can lock arms with us here at Wakana and who invited you. I want to thank you, Dr. Erica Montgomery. I want to thank you, Nurse Michelle Agnew. I want to thank you, Shannon King, Nurse Shannon King. I want to thank you, Dr. Tyus. I want to thank you, Dr. Joy Smith, for, for chiming in. You guys were amazing. And again, our whole goal and intention of this fireside chat is to really answer your questions, to be open, to invite your healthcare professional uh, to these calls so that we can really spit, uh, share this information that can really empower us to have a holistic, organic, natural approach to our health. So have a good evening. Thank you again. Love you all. And Thank have you. A great great night. Bye, Dr. Rita. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Rita. You guys are amazing. Bye. This was absolutely awesome. Can't wait till the next one. Can't wait. You're good.